Did you know that the Santa Claus you consider traditional is actually a marketing ploy from the Coca-Cola company from the 30s, I think? I think it was Norman Rockwell who painted what we now consider Santa Claus. Before that, he was a strict disciplinarian, hence all the coal in stockings and whatnot. And the coal in the stocking wasn't necessarily a bad thing, because back then, when the tradition was young, uh, you would actually use the coal to heat the home. So even bad kids got something of value, namely warmth. Did you know that if you received all the gifts from the 12 days of Christmas, you would have 364 gifts? Nearly all of them would be birds. What on earth are you going to do with a gross and a half, two, three grosses of birds? It's too many. It's too many birds. And the five golden rings, those are golden ring-necked birds. The tallest Christmas tree ever displayed, according to the Juinus Book of World Records. I don't know what Juinus is. Apparently it's a pube in Ireland where they make something that they call beer, but everyone else calls pumpernickel tea. Like it's a fermented, bubbly pumpernickel. Anyway, it's, uh, according to them, the tallest tree was in Seattle in 1950, and it was 221 feet tall. Norwegian scientists have postulated that Rudolph's red nose is not magical, but in fact the result of a parasitic infection of the respiratory system. Which would explain my, why my uncle's nose is so red. He's probably got that too. So most of Santa's reindeer have male-sounding names, but male reindeer lose their antlers before Christmas, which means, which means either he's got some lesbian reindeer, or they're castrati, or I, I don't know, something's going on there. Something's going on there. Fun fact, the Puritans viewed Christmas as a decadent Catholic holiday and banned it from 1659 to 1681 with a penalty of five shillings for each offense. Some Puritan leaders condemned those who favored Christmas as enemies of the Christian faith. War on Christmas, anybody? In Japan, many people traditionally eat KFC for Christmas dinner, thanks to a successful marketing campaign from 40 years ago. KFC is so popular that customers must place their order up to two months in advance. Nearly all of the most popular Christmas songs, Winter Wonderland, Chestnuts Roasting, White Christmas, were not written by Christians, in fact, but by Jews. And that's not because of any religious reason. It's just that, let's face it, in the 40s, 50s, there were so many brilliant Jewish songwriters, and they just did good work. In 1867, a Boston industrialist heard Charles Dickens read a Christmas carol, and was so moved that he closed his factory on Christmas Day and gave every one of his employees a turkey. Not a raise, not a, not a cash bonus they could spend as they see fit, and, you know, it was just Christmas Day they got off. You know what? It was a step in the right direction. It's, you know, baby steps. Baby steps my favorite book by the renowned psychiatrist, Dr. Leo Marvin. Christmas was not a federal holiday until 1870, which, by the way, from the previous fact, is three years later. 
95% of all Americans celebrate Christmas, even though only about 75% of the country is Christian, and only 51% consider it a strongly religious holiday. I'm not what you would call strongly religious, and I certainly celebrate Christmas because, you know, tradition. What am I going to do? Be a, be a Grinch? During Christmas time in Newfoundland, people called mummers dress up in crude disguises and go from house to house. At each house they visit, they start dancing, playing music, and get wasted drunk while the hosts try to discover their true identity. Jerry. Jerry from next door. Jer Jerry. <sighs> Come on, Jerry. That's obviously you. Son, uh, put the brandy down. Son of a... Christmas is celebrated on the 25th of December, not because it is believed to be the date of the birth of Christ, but so it would align with the Roman sun god holiday. Saturnalia? I don't recall. So much of Christmas is co-opted from pagan, druid, and other religions. To call anything a war on Christmas would be to call everything a war on everything. Paul McCartney's song, Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time, nets him $400,000 per year. And we're talking, what? 30, 40 years? <sighs> well, it's just a good thing copyrights never expire. I mean, they do, just not in practice. So that's it for the Christmas edition of Fun Facts. I hope you learned something. And more than that, I hope you questioned some things because as I am always the first to say, much of what I say has not been verified, and some of it has been intentionally falsified. I, I just do this to keep you on your toes, to keep your critical thinking running, and because you know what, guys? Because I love you. I love you at Christmas, and I love you the rest of the time. It's just how it goes. Fun Facts, Christmas Edition. <laughs>